right, I'm going to move you over to an attendee, and our next um, presenter is Adela Cho. So I will get her up as a panelist momentarily. Just let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. Okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my capstone project. For the capstone, I did the effectiveness of the Guilford plastic bag ban. First, some background information. Introduced to the United States in 1979, plastic bags were marketed as a more durable and superior version of paper and reusable bags and quickly became the go-to bag for stores and supermarkets to use. Unfortunately, as we all know, that same durability that made the plastic bag so popular is also what makes it so horrible for the environment. In 1997, Charles Moore discovered one of the most famous examples of the harm plastic bags can bring on the environment, the Great uh, Pacific Garbage Patch. It covers 1.6 million square kilometers and is still growing. As more effects of plastic bag usage was uncovered over the years, people started to move for plastic bags to be banned, starting with the country of Bangladesh in 2002. However, it was a slow movement to grow. It was not until 2014 that the first waves of this movement gained traction in the United States. California became the first state to ban plastic bags, followed shortly after by Hawaii in 2015. However, it was another four years until other states such as New York, Delaware, Maine, Oregon, and Vermont joined their ranks. Unfortunately, today there are still a large number of states that are even actively against the banning of plastic bags. The most notable of these states is Texas, home to oil industries that have been known to push against any effort or movements for bans of plastic bags, as plastic bag bans would reduce the profit they gain from making plastic bags. In the slide, you can see here is a map of all the countries that have banned them in the red, tax them in the green, or have a partial one in the orange. And in the second picture, you can see which states have uh, banned, including Connecticut over here, and which states are against. Next, let's look at the Guilford Town Ban and the Connecticut State Law. The Guilford Sustainable Task Force began talks about a possible ban in early 2019. And after a meeting in May 28th and a unanimous vote by the Board of Selectmen on June 3rd, the Guilford Plastic Bag Ban was passed and set to go into effect on January 1st of 2020. The ban prohibited the use of single-use plastic bag by stores and placed a 10 cent fee on paper bags. According to Terry Maine, Terry Kane, my mentor and task force co-chair, the paper fee was an important component. The task force's goal was not to cause people to switch from plastic to paper bags, but instead to reduce the usage of single-use plastic bags, bags in general, and with that, their carbon footprint. Although paper bags are slightly more environmentally friendly than plastic bags, they still have a carbon footprint. It is easy to confuse the Guilford Town Ban and the Connecticut State Tax, but the distinctions are important. While Guilford banned plastic bags and placed an additional fee on paper bags in 2020, the state took things a little bit slower. In August 2019, a plastic bag tax was implemented as a way for people to acclimate to using alternative options to plastic bags. Without this, there surely would have been a backlash as people were set in their ways of using plastic bags. It is not until July 2021 that a statewide plastic bag ban will go into effect, but it's still great that we are making progress. Here, you can see, this is the meeting uh, in Guilford uh, that happened on May 28th, where people uh, would either say that they approved, liked, disliked of the plastic bag ban. What is my capstone about? Well, the purpose of my capstone is to study the effects that the town ban would have on the people of Guilford, their habits, and how effective the ban would be. I wanted to discover if the town ban would be able to influence people enough 
not only to make the switch from plastic to paper bags, but to convert to using reusable bags. In addition to this, I wanted to study the attitudes of the Guilford community towards the plastic ban and the paper fee, both before and after they went into effect. I chose this subject to do my capstone after the town ban had been passed and the state tax was in effect. I therefore, it was on the news and I read a couple articles about it. I have been confused and curious enough about the topic to do some independent research on it. And when I told my family about it, about what I learned, they encouraged me to take it a step further and create a capstone about it. Data collection. To achieve my aim, I designed a survey that will record their people's product choices, as in whether they like to use plastic, paper, or reusable bags, their habits or how frequently they used it and for which one, and their opinions about the bags. I recorded the, these all four before and after the state tax in August 2019 and after the Guilford uh, town ban in January of 2020. To have the most effective survey possible, I studied other, more professionally done surveys that had the same line of questioning that I did and based my survey off of them. The method of survey that I chose to data, collect data by was by word of mouth. I asked those who took the survey to send it to others in Guilford. I was aiming to get a picture of the whole Guilford community and wanted a widespread of view as possible. I collected data from almost 150 people this way. Here you can see how the word of mouth works. One person gives it to a couple people who each give it to a couple more people, who each give it to a couple more people. Here are the results from my data collection. In the first picture, we have people's choice of products before the state tax in August 2019. Here, you can see that the majority of people chose to use plastic bags, 111 people. Next largest was reusable bags at 84. Then lagging behind was paper bags at 31. The second picture shows people's choices after the state tax went into effect. Here, the amount of people who chose plastic decreased drastically from 111 to just 40. While the reusable users went from 84 to 132. The people who picked paper chose about the same, only a small difference from 31 to 38. Clearly, the prospect of having to pay for a plastic bag convinced many to, to stop using it. Part of the plastic bag's appeal is its ease of use and no cost, as before stores would offer plastic bags for free. The tax, however, changed this. In the third picture, which measures people's choices after the town ban. The, the people who use paper bags dropped to almost nothing, just 10 people. Plastic paper bags stayed around the same at 35 versus 38. And almost everyone uses reusable bags. Curiously, the amount of people who chose to use paper bags stayed constant while reusable bags seem to become more and more of an attractive option. While the amount of people who selected reusable bags may come as a surprise, at least to me, especially in the first result, keep in mind that the survey allowed for people to check off multiple items. So the high number of reusable bags only indicates that people use reusable bags, not that it was only the main, their main product or the only product that they used. For example, someone could use paper bags maybe once and maybe reusable bags twice, but plastic bags the rest of the time, but they would still check off each one, which would account for the high numbers. In this slide, here are the results from the survey concerning people's frequency use of either plastic, paper, or reusable bags. In the first picture, it shows the frequency before the state tax. Here, 
People absolutely prefer to use plastic bags while shopping, with the majority choosing the option almost all the time, as you can see right here. And only a couple choosing most of the time, some of the time, and very little of the time. With paper bags, very few people used it, with, almost, with the majority in the very little of time, so they used it very infrequently. With reusable bags, people seem to also use them infrequently, but slightly more than paper bags. Mo while it's a spread out graph, the majority is in the sum of the time. The second picture depicts the frequency after the state tax. Here, the plastic bag users have decreased, with the majority now in the very little of time and a significant amount in the never. For the paper, it is, has not changed much, slightly more usage, but still majority in the very little of time. However, there was a huge increase in the use of reusable bags after the state tax. You can see here, majority of people clicked almost all the time for using reusable bags. Finally, the third picture presents the usage of the bags after the town ban and shows almost no use of paper plastic bags, a little bit yes, less use of paper bags, and people choosing to use reusable bags almost all the time. To sum up, if you look at both people's product choices and how frequently they chose to use that product, people used almost entirely plastic bags before the state tax, while occasionally using reusable bags and almost never using paper ones. The state tax, surprisingly, proved to result in the most dramatic change in people's behavior, as opposed to the town ban. It reduced the plastic usage to almost none, and the plastic, and the plastic town ban stamped out all the rest of the stragglers who are still using it. Anyone left who still used it would have had to go to another town in order to get plastic. Another surprising result was the preference for reusable bags over paper. Well, normally that could be assumed here because this is after the paper fee went into effect, so people might be less likely to use it. But still, people seem to almost prefer reusable over paper even before the fee came into effect. Next, I'm going to show you the attitudes of people and if experiencing the laws in effect make people love it or hate it. Here are two pie charts comparing people's attitudes before and after the Guilford plastic bag ban went into effect in January of 2020. Here's the before pie chart. Here you can see that the response to the plastic bag ban was almost overwhelmingly positive with almost 75% of people in support of the plastic bag ban and 50% of people in the strong support. However, and most of the people who did not approve were in the fence or on neutral with only a small portion disagreeing with it. In the after pie chart, there is only a slight change with a small increase of supporters as some of the fence sitters change side to join the support. You can tell this because although the fence sitters number decreased, the only the support side increased while the number of those who disapproved remained the same. This indicates that after experiencing a life without plastic bags, the community remained positive and in support of this ban, with some of the fence sitters even being swayed to the supporting side. Next, you can see the data of people's opinions of the paper bag fee that accompanied the plastic bag ban in January 2020. This one proved to be a little more controversial. While the plastic bag ban re uh, received almost overwhelming support, the paper fee had a much more mixed opinion. Only 48% 48, uh, 48 of people were in approval of it with a whopping 23% neutral and another 27% uh, in disagreeing with it. After having to live with this fee, 
almost no one's opinions changed. There was still half an approval, a good chunk quarter in neutral, and the rest in strong or just disapproval. In contrast to the plastic bag ban, which was welcomed with open arms, the paper fee was given a much colder reception in the Guilford community. While I was able to gather my data successfully, the data collection process did not go completely smoothly. While word of mouth method of surveying people ensured that the survey would reach many people who I would not have been able to reach otherwise, or who I don't even know, it also resulted in a harder to control group. For example, I, also, I asked people for, in addition to the survey questions, their approximate age, age groupings, their gender, and the schooling they received. Here, you can see that it was disproportionately female to male. While the other categories of schooling and age groups were more diverse, with uh, equal amounts in each category, the gender was unfortunately skewed. However, the word of mouth also uh, resulted in a higher participation rate than I would have gotten from just posting online, as you are more likely to do something from someone you trust and like than in just a random stranger on the internet. Another obstacle was the pandemic and the resulting quarantine. The pandemic has had a huge impact on people's shopping habits and their bag choices. First, People in quarantine will only shop when necessary as they want to stay safe, which is good, but also makes it very hard to do data collection on people's shopping habits as it's changed from such dramatically. Disease is at the forefront of everyone's minds, and as a result, people who were initially for plastic bag bans might have been swayed or used it anyway, no matter the environmental impact, in an effort to stay safe. For example, in places like Texas, where bans are being pushed or are starting to gain movement, the oil companies took the quarantine as an opportunity to stall these bans, and the momentum has almost completely ceased. Here, you can see that people, 32% visit stores less frequently, and 22% buy things more online. This results in less use and a disruption, so I was unable to do a second survey. Ordinarily, I would have done a follow-up survey in order to see how the ban in interacted with time, to see if more people would like it, dislike it, or become neutral after a certain period of time. So in the end, was the Guilford Town ban on plastic bags a success or a failure? I would say that overall, after looking through all the data and analyzing it, that the plastic bag ban was a success. The ban, with the help of the state tax, dramatically decreased the usage of plastic bags while seeing a huge increase in the usage of reusable bags. If you uh, remember earlier when I mentioned Terry King, she mentioned that the goal of the Guilford Sustainable Task Force was not only to reduce plastic bags and their carbon footprint, but also to increase the reusable bag usage as, car as paper bags have a carbon footprint as well. The paper bag fee, however, was the one downside. If it can be a fault called a failure, that would be the only thing. It was not particularly welcomed by the community and might have made some people's lives harder. My experience. Overall, I would say that my experience with the Capstone project has been an overall a positive one. There are definitely aspects of the project that I would change if I had the chance to do it over again, such as some parts of the survey that I would fine tune, but hindsight is 2020. For example, in the survey, I gave people the option to put other and describe their opinion or how they did it. Unfortunately, people just ended up writing in sentences a longer version of what I'd already given an option for and I had to take out some results because they were simply just not relevant. Other than that, I enjoyed researching a subject that I could choose and therefore interested me 
And the, top, the, the thing that the topic was a current issue, as in still going on today, and will continue to, was only a bonus. Doing this kind of long-term project was a new experience for me. Previously, the longest project I had ever done was a research paper for school that only lasted a couple months. Doing a year-long capstone project could be stressful and came with new problems I have not experienced before, like keeping up work and managing things for a whole year instead of just a couple months. But it was a valuable experience that I know I will uh, take and use in the future. Here are my sources. And I would like to thank my mentor, Ms. Kane, my advisor, Ms. Chiapa, my guidance counselor, Ms. McDonald, and my family for helping me with the capstone project. The end. Any questions? Nice job, Adela. Do you want to just come back um, to the screen? You could stop sharing and we could open it up to questions and comments. Okay. Very well done. I'm really, really impressed with all your data and the detail. Um, I'm so glad that you ended up doing it as a full year project because I think it really gave you the opportunity to be able to get into that detail. And um, as much as it's been um, a very terrible experience going through this pandemic, it's really interesting how that kind of folded into your project and how you're able to use that data, which is so relevant and so um, timely right now with all of this. Okay. Yeah, so, um, really, really interesting. So I Thank will. Thank you. You're welcome. So I will open it up to questions and comments. Um, our first one is from the first selectman, Matt Hoey. How do you think the temporary repeal of the ban because of COVID nineteen would have would have been perceived? I think a temporary ban most likely would have been received positively by the public if only because in the past couple of months, people's priority have been proven to sh been shifted from environmental to safe. I actually disconnected to do something I was doing in my psychology class. He had us look in the attitudes of people in times of great crisis. People tend to become more, not selfish, but self, like um, looking out for yourself, protecting yourself and your family. So if they say, all right, well, if it makes my family safe, they would be willing to use plastic bags for it and not really want to deal with the long-term effects. They'd see, I just need to keep my family safe and then I can deal with environmental concerns. Yeah, good answer. And I think that that's really true is that those things definitely were put on the back burner because safety tended to be key right now. Mm -hmm. um, so I agree with you. if there's any other questions not yet so what are next steps for you are you do you plan to continue your research along this topic do you have any plans to study um any environmental awareness in college well i'm currently uh set on major for environmental science in college right now and well in quarantine i'll probably definitely be keeping an eye on the plastic bag usage if only for a lack of other things to do. So I'll definitely be keeping on touch with this, but I don't know how in-depth my research would be once college starts. Sure. It'd be really um, interesting to do kind of a comparison study next year as opposed to this year with everything that's been going on to kind of look at your data. Um, right, right. I think it's something that's going to, the information that you learned and what you gained is something that's probably gonna stay with you for a while and maybe something that you'll look back on as you continue your studies in environmental science. Yeah, this was definitely a memorable experience. <laughs> for sure, for sure. 